Obviously, it's a very prescient film. We are seeing social media is becoming more and more popular. There are more and more forms of social media. I mean, I've lost count, but when I was a kid, it was MySpace, and now I can't even keep up. How did you know this was a story you wanted to tell from a as a director? Well, so it happened when I met, actually, Sebastian. So, you know, I really just kind of met him. I was at some after party in New York City, and some guy's, like, telling me how famous he is, you know? He's like, hey, you know, we just meet, and he's like, oh, I'm so famous. I can't walk down the street in New York. And I'm like, who is this guy, you know? <laughs> and so he told me, you know, he has all these followers on Instagram. And so we, we really, like, hit it off. And I was like, you know, I just want to kind of get into, like, this, you know, this phone and see exactly what's really happening in these people's life. Because, you know, you see a girl with a picture on Instagram, and then you meet her in person, you're like, hold on, that's not the same girl, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I just kind of wanted to, like, get in and, you know, indulge into this world and just, and try to, and just tell the story. And, you know, and so that's what we did. We set out, Cameron and I, one of the producers, we just kind of said we're going to make, we're going to, you know, March 1st we came up with the idea. We're going to film on April 5th, and we, and we did it, and we just traveled. And Sebastian, how did you feel when you were approached <laughs> by Brian? <laughs> um... Well, it was when he went out with me that he realized that I was not lying, that I literally cannot walk down the street without getting recognized. It's weird because a lot of meme pages um, don't really show their lives or the, what they look like. They hide behind their keyboard, as I call it, mm. and my whole life is out there. Like, I mean, as you could just tell. <laughs> And, and, and it's weird too because we, you know, we travel. Sometimes I'll travel by myself and I'll get a little bit bored. So I'll call some. I'll fly Sebastian in like on the cheapest seat possible, like <laughs> double seat coach, middle seat. And so then like we'll be in Berlin and we'll go out to dinner and I'm like, how do you guys know this guy? And they're like, oh, we're fans. We DM'd him and they were so excited that he DM'd him back. And I'm like, this is insane, you know? Yeah. Like, and it, you would think in America it would be more, but it's crazy in Europe. Really? Like, we were at the Zurich airport, and like this six-year-old TSA woman had a heart attack that she saw me, <laughs> and she was like, "Oh my God, it's the bear!" Because I, I had the bear backpack, and she was like, "I have to get a photo." And I, it was, I was like, "What the fuck is my life?" <laughs> there's, there's something I wanted to tell you too. I actually paid that lady. No, you no I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 and okay, Emma, how did you come on board this? Um, well, I was approached via social media, actually. Of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, Brian and his team sent me a DM on Instagram, and they said, uh, we're a young production company from New York, Red Button. We're putting together a documentary about the lives of, you know, influencers around the world. And, uh, yeah, that was it. They put uh, two and two together, met my team. They flew down to South Africa. They followed me for about a week or two. Right. And that's how I ended up in Public Figure. Cool. And you, Emma? Basically, um, exactly the same way. Yeah? Um, yeah, I think you guys slid <coughs> to my DMs, and then <laughs> I got an email, and it kind of went from there. So. And have you all seen the final film? Yes, I, I have. Too many times. <laughs> <laughs> and how do, you, how do you all feel like, about the film? Do you think it... it, it ha um, I mean, it has a big impact on me, because I just have never seen myself on film like that, mm. and I'm fully fucked up in that film, <laughs> like fully. And it got me to get so, not sober, because I still drink, but I stopped, I was a full blown like cokehead for eight years. And I stopped, like I hit six months, like a few days ago. Wow, well so, congratulations. So yeah, it was just like, I just couldn't believe like, had the delusions I have like on this film. I'm just like, I do not say these things. It's just like. I, I do have a favorite quote from you, Sebastian. Um, you've got champagne, vodka, <laughs> and poppers. And your exact quote is, I'm full of three fluids, champagne, <laughs> poppers, vodka, <Yeah>. pause, <laughs> and cum. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we, lo we love that. Oh my uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I know she asked me, literally, we're in the train station yesterday. I just have, I don't care. I don't have a filter. And she's like, Sebastian, how do you have so much energy now that you're off drugs? And I was like, come in my ass. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it's a bit of a weird one because I think everyone uses social media. Like, yes. um, but how did you guys get your start? Like, it's a silly question, because I know how you got your start. You signed up. But what made you think that this was potentially a career for you, something you could do full time? Well, Banan's different, I think. Yeah, 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 you are slightly yeah. different <laughs> there, Banan. I will admit that. Yeah. Okay. So, you want to answer? Or like, um, if we just get your perspective on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, you know, what social media has done is made the world uh, very, very uh, small. I think we're able to see what other people are doing on the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. For me particularly, it's kind of uh, taken me to places I've never been to, int introduced my brand and what I do to people around the world. You know, I have uh, so many places that I go to that I wouldn't imagine 
I'd be able to touch or people I'd be able to speak to if it wasn't for social media. You know, things like Instagram and Facebook. I think that's how it's kind of helped me. It has extended what I do a little bit further than just at home. And Sebastian? Um, I worked in comedy before. Okay. And so I just like always had a knack for like writing, even though I have a business degree, which I don't know why I have a business degree. Um, but. And I had a crazy ex-boyfriend, and I was private, and I, I would make memes, but I said, if I had a thousand followers, I'll go public. Right. And then I fucking blew up, so. And Emma? Um, I did some reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> the Bachelor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, The Bachelor. Very forever. briefly, for <laughs> like two episodes, and that's where I started, I guess. And was it from when you first appeared on The Bachelor? Was it just all of a sudden yeah, an influx yeah. of followers? Yeah, I mean, Australia's obviously we're a smaller country so yeah, yeah. it's easier to kind of get recognized there i guess you're a a big duck in a small pond i think so um yeah and then from there just i don't know i just started traveling nice with that, which is fun. excellent and uh, you do mention you all do all bring this up in the film that uh, you know there's this dark side of social media and if you do have a following you guys do have a responsibility is there anything you hope to achieve with your following um you know is there anything you've set out to do with it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, what's the, you know, uh, point of having such a big platform if you're not going to use it for the right reasons? Well, for me, what I appreciate about social media is, uh, you know, I have things in, in, in my life that I'm very passionate about, especially in Africa, like girls' education. So through social media, I've been able to uh, do many, many projects, you know, speak at the UN General Assembly, speak at the UN Women's Summit, tell the world about, you know, the uh, 130 million African girls who aren't in school, kind of spread the word, tell people around the world, heads of state, whoever it is that wants to listen. Uh, that you know, there's a problem back home that we're trying to get our girls into school. So are you listening? So thank you, Lord, for for Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. You can literally tweet at a head of state, and yeah. you know it's up to them to see it or not. But th that's what's wonderful about it is that you you can use this platform to really kind of make a difference. So. Yeah, I, I appreciate it for those things. It does have dark sides to it, like anything else, but uh, it's manageable, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. And Sebastian Heller? Um, so I cut my Instagram gets me into a lot of fights, but I, it's plain and simple. I just want to make you laugh. I, my father died right in front of me when I was 10, and comedy was what got me through like depression. And so if I can get you, like, get for, if I can make you go like a second, a minute, a an hour, a day, a month, forgetting about something just by making you laugh and forgetting about your, what's going on in your life, that's all I care about. So that's why I'm like, it's a fucking joke. Like, get over it. Like, I hate, like, me and the social justice warriors go at it. Like, <laughs> like, I can't imagine trying to be a comic. Like, just a simple, like, Don Rickles or, like, Rodney Dangerfield, like, them being like, w like woman, get in, the, get in the kitchen and make me a sandwich. Like, just, like, a simple thing from, like, I Love Lucy or something. Mm -hmm which are these iconic shows, just like, would never be able to be around now. Yeah. So. And Emma? Um, I think, to be honest with you, this is something that I've only just started doing in the last kind of six months. I think up until now, it's been, you know, not necessarily shallow for me, but it's been like aesthetically, you know, I, I go here and I wear this and whatever. But yeah. um, you know, one of my New Year's resolutions last yeah. year was actually to like start using it for the good, the greater good, giving back. Um, recently in Kenya, I just worked with um, a female charity there, which was really good. So I think that's something I'm still working on, but it's definitely, yeah, something that I'm, I'm more focused on this year. Amazing. Brian, to take it back to you, um, Obviously, you're making a documentary about social media and the effect it has on people. Was there anything you learned through this process, uh, sorry, through the process of making the documentary that maybe you hadn't considered when you first began it? Sorry, just when you started the documentary, I presume there were things you didn't know about it that you've only realized, you know, once you started yeah, making no, it. Definitely. That, it, was, it would be more like... Um, Brian? Oh yeah, when we, <laughs> yeah, we need the mic, right? It, it really happened when... Um, after we interviewed Dr. Stratner, like our first psychologist, um, you know, because obviously, you know, going into the influencer's life, you know, it's pretty much, you know, there's, it, there's a flood of, you know, influencers mm -hmm. out there. But when we got to the, the, the psychiatrist, that really, like, took a turn for where our movie was going. And so, man, we learned so much. I mean, it's like words like fubbing and, and all these, like, little cool things that we just, you know, we, we do it now. You know, we yeah. all go to dinner and we're like, no one's talking to each other. You know what I mean? It's well, just... 
But I had no idea that was a word until I was watching the documentary. Yeah. So then I was like, oh my God, I'm doing that in my lounge yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so it opened this whole like new way that we could document this and go, and it just like really made the second half of our film. You know, I'm really proud of that second half. You know, it's yeah. the first two, but it just kind of, you know, it gives meaning. It gives something to like, edu it, you know, education. It gives yeah. people. People can say, man, this. You know, we can all see ourselves in what they're saying. Absolutely. And has it changed the way you behave on social media at all? I mean, I'd ask all you no. guys, but you, yeah, well, <laughs> <get> shock. <laughs> Go on, Rob. Yeah, it, it just it just makes me like more aware. Yeah. You know, it makes me more aware. You know, when I you know you go to dinner, you walk into a restaurant, four people are sitting there. You there, none of them are talking. So that's us, you know, in a way. Yeah. So it kind of does make you a little bit aware. And I'll say, you know, let's be present. There's a million times where I'll say to Sebastian, let's be present, man. Let's Absolutely. be present. You know, so so in that way. But yeah. also, you know, what I love about the film is the timing. You know, I think we are at the exact perfect time for a film like this to be coming out because social media is a problem. Yeah. Um, and what I love also is I, I, I made my parents watch this film and I remember them saying, oh, now I understand. So more than anything, I think parents who have children who are growing up in the era of social media may be going to understand it a little bit more. And also parents who maybe don't understand uh, the career yeah. that you actually can make money from just being on YouTube or Instagram. This film is going to help educate the parents of children who have those kinds of things. Because whether you like it or not, the world is changing. Yeah. 2019, our kids, my kids, whoever, are going to start wanting different kinds of jobs and getting into different kinds of creative spaces. So, and those spaces are usually kind of come out of social media. So, you know, I love the fact that it does that, but also it gives, it's, it's, it's got gravitas, you know, it doesn't leave you hanging. Yeah. It helps you understand the psychology behind why social media is so addictive. But, oh, so. And to add to that, you know, you, the kids are socializing different. You know, when yeah. we were kids, you know, we'd, I would play basketball or football, soccer, whatever you guys call it here. I think it's football, right? And so, soccer. Soccer, soccer. <laughs> so, but, you know, we were doing that in the streets and playing. But now kids are sitting in their room binging on, like, you know, Instagram all day. 14-year-old kid, you know, that kid's not going to have the same social kind of, you know, you know, uh, what is it, social well, behavior. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's yeah, just there. they're inside yeah. on their laptops and yeah. iPads, because kids are different, yeah, right? Yeah, you take that phone yeah. away from a 15-year-old that's been on it 12 hours a day, he's gonna have, you know, some withdrawal. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just, it's insane. Um, I just think it's really, our, after seeing the trash movie American Meme on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh it, no, it was Thank horrible. That movie. It was, that movie was disgusting. It was like the fat Jew, Paris Hilton, Emrata, Haley Baldwin, we know you're making a shit ton of money. Like you have m tons of millions of followers. Yeah. And it was just so superficial and like not informative. Like I was like, I literally just watched 90 minutes of my life just go away, <laughs> not learn one thing. But to add to that, um, the, the producer of American Meme really liked the film. Oh really? And he set us up with a guy that's, um, he had a re relationship with a company called Gravitas Ventures. Mm -hmm. And they're a big dis distribution company for documentaries and film in the U.S., probably in the world. And so right before we got here, we uh, signed a deal with them, a worldwide uh, distribution deal with oh, Gravitas. Amazing. So thank God for American Meme because it just happened that, you know, he, this, this, the producer liked it, set me up with this guy named Bryce Wagner. And now we kind of have a distribution deal. So. Now the world gets to see this Tasmanian devil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Help us all. So is, but then you mentioned something quite interesting, though. Yeah. Is it difficult as, I mean... The, the term social media, you know, social media influencer is reductive. I'm aware of that. But is it difficult to explain to people, no, this isn't just something, you know, it's not a hobby. This is my job. I mean, in the documentary, we see some Instagrammers who are working 60 hours a week. Yeah. Like, is it a challenge even now in 2019? It used to be. I don't think it is so much anymore because people are actually seeing, you know, people around them. Yeah. having jobs and living lives from being a YouTuber. Um, and you, there are actual companies that are popping up uh, around managing social yeah. media influencers. There are people who are now, uh, you know, it's, it's social media advocates. You need the lawyers, there's social media laws. I mean, in South Africa, uh, recently, there's a, a, a new law that was added that protects people from social media bullying. So the you know the world is really really changing, and if you if you don't realize that you can do and and you can see that people are creating and making jobs off the internet, then wake up. Yeah, yeah, you use what you are spot on. Yeah, like everyone works on social I media. I mean, hello. These days. I mean, get I some Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like whenever uh, someone asks me what I do, I'm like. 
Get ready. It's the most millennial job in the world. <laughs> you, have an, you have an interview in Vice where it, where it says, we spoke to a professional mima or something like that. And you, that's literally what they describe you as, which I love. No, loved. I mean, women's wear daily, like Gucci, like it's just crazy. Yeah. And everyone didn't know, because I was doing it before I got the Gucci campaign, but everyone didn't know it because Gucci showcased who the memers were. Yeah. And I work with companies and they don't, they want it to look like they made it. So oh. I make all the content for them without my watermark. Right, fair enough. And Emma, um, do you have to explain to people, I, in, Instagram is my job essentially. Um, I've been lucky enough to take, um, I guess what I've learned and create two other companies. So Instagram's not my full-time job. Excellent. Um, I have a longer term goal and I think that's, um, I mean, Instagram will always be there, but I'm not, it, there's not longevity in it for me. You know, I'm. The, everything has an ending, and yes. I, especially as an influencer. Um, so I've taken those skills and created agencies that create social content for people and look after their Instagram. So my Instagram is probably would be more now my hobby. Excellent. Um, which I think is good to have that balance between well, reality and not. It's interesting you mentioned that. Um, just to, through what I do for my day job, I work a lot on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we've been warned. You know, you're massive on Facebook right now, but come tomorrow, Facebook might be gone, and then that's not going to be there. Can you speak a little more about these projects that you're developing outside? Um, so I have two agencies that are they're social agencies. So they work across all platforms. Um, mm. So we manage brands, social media, create their content and tell their brand story. Basically, they're branding on an aesthetic level. Um, I think that I, I personally think that Instagram will be around for a very long time. I think that the generation underneath me is going into YouTube. Yeah. I personally am I'm not comfortable with video content. I don't, I'm not <laughs> as interesting as Sebastian. <laughs> um, but I think that it's strongly going towards video, like the, yeah. you know, um, which I don't have too much knowledge about. Too. Well, you only have to look at what Facebook wants to be. Facebook yeah. wants to be this challenger to YouTube, essentially, and it's gonna, its its plan is to deprioritize. Yeah, uh, and Instagram has started IGTV yeah, and has embedded it now into the timeline. Yeah. So you know, people want to, and also I think how people are gonna watch films and TV is going to change. Yeah, I think you're probably right there. I think it will, because yeah, I think people are always on the phones. I think, yeah, in a couple of years, you know, Sony might make a film that's mm. going to premiere on Instagram. I mean, it wouldn't shock me. I'll be completely that's honest. Where I think that's where we're going. And Sebastian, obviously, massive platform on Instagram. You mo I mean, I, I know you're going to tell me you've got other irons in the fire. What do you mean? Do you have, a, so if Instagram went away tomorrow, yeah. have you got anything else going? A Abercrombie and Fitch would hire him, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um... I mean, because I, I just work with so many brands that aren't on my Instagram. Like, yeah. I can't, I've signed NDAs because yeah. like, they're like huge companies like tech, dating, food and beverage, fashion. Um, but they just want to look like they're the cool ones making the content. Yeah. So, but that's all moi. <laughs> and it's crazy because I make it in like 10 seconds. Like, my mind just fully is always on me mode. Like, uh, do you ever find with, um, you know, with when you're working with these big brands that they think they know better than you or try and tell you how to do your job. Well, my favorite is I have this Asian client and they refuse to say meme. They say memes and it drives me <laughs> fucking <laughs> insane. Like literally makes me go insane. And but they refuse. They, it's memes. So I'm always like, yes, meme on page 19. And I'm like, because oh, I know what the origin of meme is. <laughs> so Brian, to go back to the film. Uh, to get away from social media ever right. so slow. Uh, what was the biggest challenge for you during production? The, during pr probably um, signing up some of the influencers. Um, you would, we, Cameron and I, we would you know, go in the morning, we'd start emailing, calling people, and we'd go two or three days without no one you know, coming. Yeah. And, you know, and so we had success in business and life. So you would get, like after the third day, you'd get an email from someone and we'd be like, oh my God, we would think we hit the lottery. We were so excited because you know, we're just dead. Just starting from nothing and creating is, is like the best thing ever. Yeah. Like even with her, like I think I had to inbox you like, I think I DM'd you like five times because the, the agency didn't get back to us. <laughs> and so finally after like five DMs, she's like, oh, okay, I, I sent it to my management. I sent it to my management. But it was just like you, you know, and with some of the other influencers, you would think you were like, their client was like Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, yeah. well, you know, we'll think about it or, 
You know, there was a lady in Australia that made cupcakes, right? like 200 million, 2 million followers. And they're like, well, I don't know if, you know, this is right for us. I'm like, ma'am, you make cupcakes. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I suppose cupcakes are great, yeah, no, Brian. Cupcakes are good to begin to our... <laughs> cupcakes are fantastic. Yeah. But, but I suppose to some people, like... <clears throat> I mean, this sounds silly, I know, but like some people, she probably is someone's Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. She probably is someone's like, do you know, like no, I, oh, that gets idol. crazy. People literally shake when they meet me. I'm like, I make me. <laughs> this makes no sense. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like it's insane. I've been doing these mailer dinners. That's what I call my fans. That's nice. amazing. Um, because I so because my fans hate or love me, and it's like a mailer you get in your mailbox that you don't want. They like, sorry, did you say they hate or love you? Oh my gosh. Like, oh. I have full-on hate comments, and I'm private now, which is crazy, and they still follow it. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, in the dark, uh, didn't Rita Ora, of all people, uh, want to meet that's you, and you were like, no. <laughs> I called her Iggy is, oh my god. So I met her, and I don't know why she wanted to meet me, and she was at my party, and I was like, I was like, you're like the target version of Iggy Azalea. Like, get away from me. Actually, you're more, so you're H&M. So, <laughs> <right. laughs> so I, I just like, uh, her style is the worst thing in the world. I just can't do it. I, I mean, to get away from your block list, which is pretty extensive. I think I saw Taylor Swift on there. there there's more. There's, 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 I got blocked yeah, by Kendall sure. Jenner recently. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was the big one. <laughs> Um, okay, Brian, so yeah. did anything change as a result of, you know, these troubles during production, getting in touch with people, or were you sort of reacting to things as they happened? Well, no, um, as far as, like, changing, no, I mean, we just hustled, man. We worked hard, and, mm -hmm. and we just, uh, we took, you know, we took, cool, like, we calls, and just, we just, and then we got to a point where it got really good at the end, where now people were, like, wanting to be in the film, and we're yeah. like, eh, yeah, I don't think we, we're full now, you know, we don't really, we don't, you Like, know. he was so shook that, like, because I'm best friends with Rose McGowan. Like, he was so, like, he's like, I don't know. She's not going to do it. And, well, that was my question. How did Rose McGowan <laughs> end up in the film? Let, let me tell you how that happened. Let me and tell Denzel you. Washington. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you how Rose happened. So we, um, there's, I don't want to give anything away, but there's a, a good scene in the end of the film where Sebastian talks about something. So we had to reshoot that f a film in Washington, uh, part in Washington Square Park. Mm -hmm. Not reshoot, we had to actually shoot it for the first time. And so after we shot, we were just all hanging out in my apartment. And he's like... Um, I was like seven o'clock at night. He's like, "Hey man, you want Rose to be in it?" I was like, "Seriously?" <laughs> I was like, "Cause they're really good friends." So I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." I didn't believe it, you know. <laughs> and so, she she's perfect because she without without social media right now, she really has she doesn't have a voice, you know, for that whole Me Too movement mm -hmm. thing, and no one's hiring her in Hollywood, you know. So she's you know. I think she's the perfect person to be yeah. in, you know, the, the this particular film because she is the, the founder of the Me Too movement, yeah. which has become a global sensation. So once again, I think the timing of the talent and the timing of the documentary is really really perfect. Yeah, I mean, it's like you say, it is perfect in so many ways. And, um, and it's crazy because this is his directorial debut, and so when my friends watch it, they're like, "What? Like, this is such a good, this is such a good film." So, good job, Brian. Well done, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's the first film, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting the wind up from okay. Rob, um, so I'm just going to ask one more question okay. to each of you. Okay. Uh, Brian, to you, what would you say to anyone who's looking to make their first film? Uh, I, w I would say. Um, you know, don't, you know, have, have a drive, have a dream, you know, and, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to tell you, uh, you know, this has to be done this way, it has to be done that way, but we kind of just said we're going to do it this way, and we never gave up, we just worked hard, and we, you know, and I had the right people around me, I had a consultant that was a documentary filmmaker, so, you know, I could bounce ideas, but the main thing is just don't ever give up on any type of dream, and no, and no one tells you, you, if someone tells you you can't do something, write it down, motivate yourself, and, and you can make it happen, you know? Excellent. Just hustle, you know? Send it to, you know, film festivals, just do whatever you gotta do. Yeah. Don't take no for that. Don't, don't take, take no, no for an answer. Yeah. Don't take, never take no. And guys, if anyone was looking to make a career, career, not just in social media, but the media, the media in general, would you have any advice for them? Uh, I'll go. Oh, wait, I thought, I think. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, social media is, uh, is, is very sensitive as well. So we need to be careful what we say and how you kind of represent yourself. Also, social media is very permanent. The internet never forgets. Um, and, uh, you know, whether you're somebody that wants to get into corporate or media or any industry, uh, usually your employer does a little bit of research on your of you mm -hmm. on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So be careful of the image that you portray or the brand that you are on social media. Let not it impact uh, you know your well-being yeah. or how you put food on the table. 
also um you know just be careful of what you say to human to other human beings don't be a keyboard you know terrorist there's people <laughs> uh, on the other side with feelings and emotions and yeah. it could be quite detrimental you know what you say to somebody could lead them to suicide mm -hmm. you know so, uh, social media is uh, is good and bad uh, so be careful how you use it that's what i would say to them and how do you get into the media i mean that's all i can say just kind of be careful I like that's, it. That's it. Your answer is essentially be a nice person and yeah, be a responsible person. Yeah. Uh, Sebastian and Emma, how about you? Um, I just think you have to be like authentic. I think that's why Cardi B is so popular. That's why I'm popular. Like, people are just <laughs> shook by like the things I say or do. And it's nothing, it's not an act. It's just like what's on my mind. And I just think like the system is so like pe every, like celebrities nowadays are all like, there's teams around them. They have no personality. They're just like, they're boring. Like there's, there's no like mystery to them. I mean, no, there's so much mystery to them because they're all like carbon copies of someone. Yeah. Because they have PR, they have agents, managers, uh, social media managers, just like everything. No one wants to manage Sebastian, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone could. Emma, how about you? Uh, I agree with Sebastian. Authenticity is so important. I just think having passion for what you do. Like you, passion, hard work, like you just, you just can't go wrong. Amazing. Right. Well, thank you so much, guys. Yeah.